everyone, and it's wonderful to be here in Melbourne again. Um, and uh, I'm Kate Lindsay from the uh, University of Newcastle, and I brought the beach with me. Um, and uh, I've been involved in Angela's work for a number of years and I've always thought that she's been incredibly brave to take on an academic lawyer as part of her team and um, I still feel that and uh, I've just so that you know about my experience I've not only been a PATS mentor um, at, at Newcastle in the Faculty of Business and Law but I've been the manager of our, of our PATS scheme and it was interesting to me because when I was first involved in Angela's project um, way back in at the beginning of the timeline that you saw. Um, I was so inspired and I, I went back to my institution. I talked to, I won't say who, but a, a senior person. I said, wow, we could be right at the beginning of something really inspiring and wonderful. And he said, sorry, we've got another agenda, but you can go do it in your faculty if you want. And so I said, terrific, let's do it in our faculty. So for me, what was inspiring about um, about Pats, and still is inspiring, is, is, and the hook that got me in was, in fact, the, um, um, the second line in Pats, which is not peer-assisted teaching scheme, but teachers helping teachers. So this whole idea, uh, and for me, I suppose, as a career academic, I haven't always been in law, but I have been in law for 20 years, um, it, it, it's been about collegial conversations and creating space and opportunity for us to, to have those collegial conversations. And I'm really hoping for the future that we do have that. So um, that's, that's the uh, hook for us. Now, the, I guess we were early adopters of the scheme in the Faculty of Business and Law, so this is a bit of a story about early adopters. And I guess the little device that I've used at the top on the right-hand side there, um, and, and it might mean different things to different people. But what I was getting at with that device was that, that frankly, we were putting our heads together. We're putting our heads together over the teaching and learning space. And look at the colours in the middle, OK? This is, there's something really creative, important, and terrific that happens when we put our heads together. So um, in our faculty of business and law, within the business area, we have massive numbers of disciplines. Within law, we have a fair diversity of approaches to um, the discipline of law. Uh, so, so what happens? Well, we engaged in a process of seeking out people that we call teaching leaders, people who've been recognised institutionally, nationally or at state level for excellence. And we invited those people to engage in a process of, of sharing with us what, what it was that they'd like to um, support and give to their colleagues. So we, we started off with eight teaching leaders and in our pilot in 2012, we had um, eight partnerships, as you can see, across eight courses in six academic disciplines. So we went through the whole spectrum of second, third, fourth, fifth and postgraduate courses. So we had, we had a fair range of experience there. Um, mixture of recruitment, but what we saw in every case was increasing student satisfaction, but also very significant increase in collegial engagement. Now, one of the sort of fantastic moments at the end of this trial period was our teaching and learning day in the faculty. And what actually happened there was a person who'd been quite reluctant to engage in PATS as a mentee got up at that teaching and learning day in front of whole bunch of people, maybe 80 people from the faculty and said, I want to tell you that I'm a poster boy for Pats. And you know, I just wanted to hug him. I didn't, but I really wanted to do that because he, and he's got an ongoing relationship with his Pats mentor. And, and it just has made such a difference. He doesn't feel a failure. He feels supported. He feels that he's in a collegial supportive environment. And that's always been our aim. So, I've only got 10 minutes, so what I wanted to do was to try and um, show you, give you some of my colleagues' voices, because the qualitative feedback, the quantitative feedback speaks for itself. In every instance, we're seeing um, student satisfaction improving. But what about what the participants say? So we've got from a mentee um, who is very new to teaching, 
the fact that the faculty recognised this and would, would reward her for a commitment to improvement, the fact that she wanted to develop herself. These were things that were absolutely crucial to her experience. And her mentor, the things that were important to him, um, were, look, this is a staff-friendly way of engaging together. And the collaboration that we have has valuable spin-offs. This couple, this pair, a partnership, have gone on to do research together. The, 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 the person who was the mentee has been nominated for a, a faculty-based teaching excellence award. So these are, these are things that, that were really powerfully part of the collegial environment. Um, another um, uh, response, because we're asking people to reflect all the time on this process, the idea that a mentor who had spent a very long time with the poster boy said, this is actually something which is mutually beneficial. Unsolicited in the sense that this was the person who offered it as their reflection. Okay, mutually enriching and mutually beneficial. Okay, a mentor who says, I'd come out of the professional space in law into a teaching space and I just wasn't sure what to do. And you know what? It really worked for me because somebody took the time to come along to my class and give me the good stuff and give me the constructive suggestions. So that's um, very important. Uh, what's what has uh, emerged at, at Newcastle, I think in my experience, is that the peer observation dimension of PAPS has been the thing that has been missing for so many people and that they have valued this not above everything else, not above the rest of the process, but it's been a core foundation of what's been important to them. And another mentee who said, you know, one of the things that's really important is to have somebody to sit down with who's actually sympathetic. Because often we'll raise the stumbling blocks. Look, I've got, you know, I'm teaching across five areas, I'm doing this, that and the other thing. But there might not be an empathetic or sympathetic ear there. The idea that you can sit down with your coffee and have some sympathy, I think, is, is really important. But the other thing that emerged here was the issue of big issues. How many of our colleagues are just putting their eyes down and focusing on this one course or this one narrow discipline? They don't think about the sequencing of courses in the degree. They don't think about the big, bigger curriculum issues. So in this case, when I said to the mentee, if I ask you where do you think this course that is so difficult, where ideally would you put it in the law curriculum? And the mentee said, oh, well, not where it is now because I can see how if the students did it back here when they were doing these other courses, it would actually work much better. Bingo. We come up with something together which was really exciting. Um, and we fed, of course, that back to the program convener and the, and the head of school. So in terms of our Newcastle experience, what are the ongoing um, benefits? Well, the idea, as Angela said, has happened elsewhere where you've been going for a few years. The people who have been mentees um, uh, take up this leadership role. They see this as a valuable thing. They see the benefits. It's a bit like um, any peer-assisted, as in the past thing too. People who have experienced the value of that are prepared to give back. And this, there's something terrifically uh, encouraging to me about that. Um, the ongoing encouraging of, of professional partnership relations. So we aren't all just interviews sitting in our rooms. And, um, and also the idea that we, there might be further developments at Newcastle through some, some trios um, which involve academic developers and, and Liam and I have been sort of investigating that at a certain point. But finally, I mean, I, I think we need to get back to the, the learning and, and teaching thing. And I'm just going to give the last thing to Jonathan Sachs. In many ways, we have to remember that sometimes we're the heroes for other people. We're heroes for our students, we can be heroes for our colleagues, and they can be heroes for us. Because the kinds of heroes that our culture sometimes um, really privileges are not the kind of things that we're necessarily offering. So it's really important to embed in our own culture 
the idea that much of what we do every day is an exercise in really genuine, authentic heroism. Thank you.